Maybe you didn't realize it when the series first aired, but it's pretty clear now. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 reasons Miranda Hobbs was the best. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at all Miranda's best qualities and showing why she was our favorite Sex in the City character. Number 10. She was sex positive. I like it when you're rough. When you throw my legs over your head, I lose all control. Sex in the City was known for being revolutionary for the way it looked at women's sexuality, but in retrospect, many of the characters on the show do things that seem pretty backwards. Despite the fact that the show aired in the late 90s and early aughts, Miranda always displayed a progressive attitude about sex, never shying away from her desires or being embarrassed to ask for what she wanted. Because sex is not a time to chat. In fact, it's one of the few instances in my overly articulated, exceedingly verbal life where it is perfectly appropriate, if not preferable, to shut up. Though she had insecurities like the rest of us, her confidence came out in the moments when she really needed it. Seeing her justify her vibrator to her cleaning lady is one of the highlights of the series. Magda had discovered Miranda's goodie drawer. Look, I have a boyfriend, so it's not like I'm sleeping with a bunch of different men. There's one guy, and for a long time there was no guy, and that's why I have the other thing. Number 9. She didn't care what anyone thought of her. I like to put Vaseline on my hands and put them in those Borghese conditioning gloves while watching infomercials. Miranda was never trying to impress anyone and always seemed to feel comfortable being herself. She certainly never dressed or presented herself in order to please a man because she just couldn't be bothered to. We should just admit that we live in a culture that promotes impossible standards of beauty. She knew who she was and she stuck to it, even if it sometimes meant getting raised eyebrows from those around her. Okay, but no cutesy storky shit. Just an adult, dignified lunch with presents, which I will open after everyone leaves. Whether it was knowing exactly what she wanted her baby shower to look like or perhaps eating cake from the garbage, Miranda always went for it. If there's one thing we can envy Miranda for, it's her self-assuredness. Eat me. Oh, you're so brave inside your sandwich. Number eight, she gave great advice. Does it always have to be about them? Just, you know, give me a call when you're ready to talk about something besides men for a change. Even 20 years after the show first aired, we'd be more likely to take Miranda's advice over any of the other characters on the show. Miranda was a realist and had a pretty good understanding of how the world works. Well, look, he's out there for you somewhere. You just haven't met him yet, right? Maybe, maybe not. I, I don't know if I believe all that. Maybe there isn't someone for everyone. She may have been cynical at times, but she was always there with great advice for her friends when they had their heads in the clouds or were ready to believe unrealistic things about the world of dating. Okay, Charlotte, this isn't about me. This is your stuff. She eventually opened herself up to being more positive and optimistic, but we'll take good old skeptical Miranda any day. Charlotte, I don't have time for this. I have to go to work. Some of us still have to go to work. I choose my choice. I choose my choice. I Number seven, she had a successful career and didn't apologize for it. While all four of the women on the show had pretty successful careers, Miranda was pegged from the beginning as the one who was the most serious about hers. But let me say, as far as the Mackenzie brief, Miranda Hobbs is kicking ass. Where I'm doing a bad job is at home. So, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. As a lawyer, she worked hard and took much of her identity from her job. At times throughout the series, she's challenged for being a successful working woman. Like when Steve is uncomfortable with her income or when she tries to buy her own apartment. Maybe the boyfriend will move in? No, no boyfriend. Just me. But she always remained confident in what she achieved and never let anyone make her feel bad about it. And the down payment's coming from your father? No. Just me. Number six, she was introspective. I'm never going to be a girly girl. I never will. In comparison with the other three women, Miranda was probably the most self-aware of the bunch. She was far from perfect and definitely had her flaws, but rather than letting them go unchecked like Carrie, she acknowledged them and tried to improve herself. I have no maternal instincts, no patience, the way I yelled at Charlotte. She was just trying to point out what needed to be childproofed. 
She's the voice of reason on the show because she really dug deep to get to the bottom of why people do what they do, and she had an understanding of the human condition that likely surpassed those around her. Sexy is the thing I try to get them to see me as after I win them over with my personality. Number five, she did not settle. I don't need you to bless me. <laughs> I don't need God to bless me. I'm perfectly fine with my life as it is. Miranda knows she doesn't need a man to be happy, so she surely wasn't going to settle for one that was anything less than perfect for her. Because of her reluctance to date anyone in the first place, she was hard on the people she went out with. But even as outsiders, we can tell she just sized people up to see if they were worthy of her time. I'll call you. Okay. Bye. Even though she and Steve were obviously endgame, she put him through the ringer to prove he was worthy. Miranda, you're the one. Number four, she was honest. Though this quality can sometimes display itself in a negative way, Miranda never shied away from telling it like it is. Wake up, Carrie. How many more times are you going to go through this? He is bad for you. Jesus, every time you get near him, you turn into this pathetic, needy, insecure victim. And the thing that pisses me off the most is that you're more than willing to go right back from work. She couldn't handle seeing the people she loved make bad decisions. Whether it was Carrie leaving New York to follow a boyfriend to Paris, or Steve not taking care of himself properly when he received a cancer diagnosis. This isn't your crazy yellow toenail, Steve. This is cancer. And the longer you wait to find out what's going on, the longer we even sit here having this conversation, the more likely it is that the cancer will spread and that you will die. Miranda did not hold back when she tried to get her point across. And while this sometimes created conflict, as viewers, we know she's pretty much always right. She similarly didn't bother hiding her true feelings about anything, though she did fake a sonogram. It's a boy. It's a boy. How do you feel? Oh boy! Boy, oh boy! Number three, she was relatable. While I'm eating this slice of pizza, my boyfriend is home taping my favorite TV show. And to which boyfriend are we referring? My boyfriend, TiVo. Ah. The reason we love Miranda so much is that when it comes down to it, she was and is all of us. Sometimes the other women made bad decisions that made us scream at our TV screens, but we can almost always relate to Miranda's actions. We have been over this before. I feel like you are not listening to me. I turned the system off for 10 minutes and nothing changed. She got invested in her favorite TV show characters and freaked out when her TiVo broke. She got jealous when her exes dated new people, even though she's the one who broke up with them. And when someone unexpectedly told her they loved her on a giant cookie, she ate the whole damn thing. Turns out Miranda didn't like surprises as much as she thought. Number two, she was loyal and had a huge heart. Though she may have had a tough exterior, when it came down to it, Miranda was a great friend, always willing to jump in and take care of the people she loves. She shoe shamed me. I left there covered in shame. She's a f***ing bitch. She may not exactly have been the mushy type, but she let her friends know she was there for them in the best way she could. Like walking behind Charlotte even when they were fighting after Charlotte received bad news about her fertility. I'm just gonna walk a little way behind you in case you change your mind and wanna talk. No, I'm okay. By the end of the series, she expanded that love to even include people who antagonized her, like Steve's mother, stepping up in her time of need. Steve. Your mother can come live with us. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I want to thank you all for wishing me well tonight. In spite of some of your personal opinions about my leaving. Me? I've never had an opinion in my life. <laughs> hey, it's fine. I understand. You're just not that into me, and it's okay. I get it. You got what I want? You got what I need? Uh -huh. Well, what I want is to get laid. What I need is to get laid. I need to get laid. Take it easy, lady. I'm married. All talk and no action, huh? What a gavone. Number one, she did things her way. I drink coffee and have sex and buy pies and enjoy battery-operated devices. If you can't deal with that, I will find another housekeeper who can. More than any of the other women on the show, Miranda always knew what she wanted and wasn't afraid to do whatever she had to in order to get it. Even more importantly, though, she didn't care about anyone's expectations of how things should be done. A 34-year-old guy with no money and no place to live because he's single, 
he's a catch. But a 34-year-old woman with a job and a great home, because she's single, is considered tragic. She decided to have a baby on her own, despite the fact that it wasn't planned. And when it came time to plan her wedding or baby shower, she surely wasn't going to stick with any traditions that didn't suit her. She walked to the beat of her own drum, and that's why we loved and respected her so much. No opening of presents, no games, no crustless bread, and I want fried chicken. Fried chicken? But it's not Super Bowl Sunday! It's my shower, and I'll fry if I want to. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.